Today, I'm joined by John, Mar John Rogers from the safety office to discuss electrical safety. Good morning, John. Good morning. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing well. Now, what are some of the hazards that we face here on Anniston Army Depot with electricity? Well, you know, with electricity, there's always several things that can get you. When I go through a shop, one of the first things I look at is the electrical cords, you know, whether, whether, whether it's an extension cord or it's a cord running to a piece of equipment. We look at it, is it in good shape? Has it been damaged? You know, if it's been damaged, we ought to get it replaced because there's a chance that it could short out, it could arc, could cause a fire, or it could shock us. You know, following up the cord, then we can look at the plug and the, the plug itself, is it in good shape? Unfortunately, a lot of times we have a bad habit of grabbing a cord to unplug something. And in that case, the cord becomes separated and starts showing bare wires. Now, after we get to the cord, we can also look at it. You know, a lot of equipment is designed to have a ground plug, three plugs on it, and the ground plug is pulled out or broke off. Well, that's a big no-no because that ground plug is a safety device so that if, if the equipment shorts on the inside, the body of the equipment could become energized and become a shock hazard to us. So anytime we see that, we want to put a work order in to fix it. Now, looking at the plug itself, you know, what's it plugged into? The outlet cover, is it in good shape? Sometimes we see them broken and we need to stop and put a service order in to get them fixed because that's a potential for an exposed electrical hazard. You know, we could stick something in there. We always joke about kids sticking keys in there, but if we have a broke cover, you know, we could actually accidentally stick a finger, touch it when we're plugging something in. Mm -hmm. And also electrical hazards, we can also talk about power strips. You know, the power strips themselves are not illegal or not to be used, but we have to be careful what we plug into those strips. You know, for one thing, we're not supposed to daisy chain them, you know, an extension cord into a power strip, into a power strip. In that case, we run into a problem of overloading and we, again, overloading our wiring and we could have shock hazards, overheating, um, and have other failures. Now, when we get to that point, we also have to turn back around and look at our equipment that the cord runs to. Is it in good shape? Is it pulling loose? Uh, so bottom line, a lot of the hazards are things that we can identify and put in work orders to get fixed. Okay. Sounds like we need to be paying attention and really looking at all of our equipment cords. Th that's exactly right. Now, what all does the depot do to mitigate all of these electrical hazards? Well, I I'm glad you said that, and that kind of goes back to the inspection side of what we're getting to. This month is our target zero. Our safety focus is on electrical safety. So we're asking everybody to walk down their equipment, to look at the cords, to look at the outlets, to look at the plugs, to look at their power strips, and just do a general safety, is it right? And if it's not right, then we need to stop use it and put in a service order work order. Now, some other things that we've done, you'll notice in the shops around our, our electrical panels on the wall, we're required to keep a clearance area. Uh, we go through and the shops have pretty much all of them have done this. They've painted a keep area clear. And this is to keep the area because, you know, we have a bad habit sometimes in our housekeeping. Of, hey, I need to put something somewhere. Well, there's a good spot. Well, we've marked it out so that we can keep the area clear. So if something happens, we can get to the electrical disconnects and actually kill the power to the equipment. So. Okay. Now, do we have any particular personal protective equipment that we need to wear whenever we're dealing with electrical hazards? Yeah, that, that's a good question. You know, as just a general user, we're not really required to wear anything just to plug and unplug. But now when you start to the maintenance side, and you'll see DPWs, you know, our, our majority of our electrical workers, you know, they've been through a qualified electrical worker class. And the PPE they, they have to wear typically consists of at least a cotton long sleeve shirt and gloves and eye protection and safety shoes. Now, depending on the situation, you know, you'll notice on most electrical panels, there's a little art flash label, it's orange. It'll tell them what category of clothing that they have to wear. So it could be something as simple as what I just described to a, a full blast suit if they're working around high voltage, you know, high, high voltage electrical equipment. Typically, we kill the power uh, in most situations without going going near it. So if there's no, if it's not energized, then the hazard's not there. But there are circumstances where they may have to, and there's a whole special process they go through to determine all the if there's any specialized PPE to wear. Okay. Now, do you have any electrical tips that you want to share with our workforce? Yeah, there was a couple, and it goes back to the inspections. You know, housekeeping's a big part of it. Rolling up our equipment and stopping and putting in the service order work order. You know, unfortunately, like a missing ground plug, 
hey, guess what? Your equipment still works. Well, that don't mean that it works safely. So what we ought to do is stop using it, put in the service order, work order, get it fixed, and then, you know, continue to use it. Now, the second thing to, to uh, say to that is uh, we need to stay in our lanes. You know, like we said, we have a qualified electrical workforce out here. They've been trained on it. Uh, I might can do some of this stuff at home. That don't mean I should be doing it out on the shop floor. We've got special people to do that work. So we need to let the professionals handle it. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us this morning, John. I know we all work around a lot of things that use electricity. I, I can't think of a single work area that doesn't plug something into a wall outlet somewhere. So it's always good to have these reminders.